Hey guys, welcome to CryoFX. So this video, I'm gonna be explaining CO2 flow because we explain this a lot on the phone, but I wanna make sure we just encapture this in one video so we can reference people to this video. So thank you for watching. What I'm gonna tell you in this video is how to make your CO2 the most abundant when it's coming out of whatever apparatus you want it to come out of. A jet, a CO2 jet, a CO2 cannon, a handheld cannon. So some of the questions we get asked is, look, I'm, I'm have one tank hooked up and, and it's spraying out, but it's really not looking like your videos. Well, the reason being the majority of our videos that we have and we control and the operations that we do, we try to put three tanks onto one output or three tanks onto one CO2 cannon. An output would be a handheld CO2 cannon, a CO2 jet, or whatever apparatus controls the restriction of that CO2 on and off is basically what a handheld gun or a CO2 jet does. Why do I say three tanks? Because in simple layman's terms, you have the CO2 fitting that comes off of the CO2 tank. The diameter and area space of that hole Three of those equal the size of the whole of our general output, high output valve. So what does that mean? That means that when you have one tank, the CO2 that's coming out, remember a CO2 system is the most restrictive flow of the whole system. Think of water in a sense. What happens is the most restrictive part is literally the bottleneck to the entire flow. So when you have one tank, on a CO2 system with our products at least, what happens is you have a CO2 fitting, a CO2 tank, you have your hose, and you have your handheld gun or your CO2 jet. Out of either one of those, the CO2 fitting is the most restrictive part of that entire system. Let's say our high output valve, it's probably, it's a 15, not probably, it's a 15 millimeter valve. Well, what happens is 15 millimeters, five, 10, 15, that's only about five, it's about four to five millimeters of space and the area of that CO2 fitting. Well, what does that mean? That means that one tank is the most restricted part. If I add two tanks to the line, you're gonna get more CO2 bulk, but you're also gonna get more flow because you have more, you have double what you would because of those restrictive fittings, but it still doesn't equal the output that's allowed by the valve because the valve is 15 millimeters. And again, I'm using space. This actually gets involved in the entire area of the circle or the output that it's coming out of. But in layman's terms for this video, just wanna tell you that. So I can add up to three tanks on the line before now, before the valve is the most restrictive part. What does that mean? That means that one tank to your hose because the hose is three eighths and the hose is definitely bigger than both the valve and the fitting. You could probably put five or six tanks, sometimes seven or eight, depending on the size of the hose, to equal the total volume that could go through the hose. Well, now the hose is gonna be the most restricted part if I keep adding more tanks to it, but that's not the case here. The most restricted part you want is the valve because the valve is where you're putting the CO2 out into the open atmosphere. So on our videos, we have such an abundance of CO2 because we have three tanks, sometimes four, on that single CO2 jet or cannon system. And what that does is that allows the most CO2 to flow into the hose, three tanks flow into one hose, that hose goes to our valve and that valve puts out into the atmosphere and it looks crazy. Of course, results may vary because of humidity and temperature, just wanna preface that. But in simple terms again, and recapping all of this, one tank, you're gonna get an okay effect, Two tanks, you're gonna get more CO2, but you're gonna get a better effect, more of a plume, more of a better look. Three tanks, yet even better. It's gonna be even better coming out. Again, heat and humidity definitely pay a part in this. But four tanks, five tanks, six tanks or more doesn't do any effect on the output because you've reached a point where the valve now is actually the most restrictive part and the valve itself now is restricting the entire system. So it doesn't matter how many tanks you put on. So I wanna explain this on this video because we do get questions asked about CO2 flow. So if you ask us for a recommendation and professional recommendation, I always say three tanks on the one line with our valves and our CO2 products. 
other companies, not gonna be the same. And that's a whole nother video. On this page, we have other videos that explain what the difference is between CryoFX products and other companies' products. More so, it's the orifice of the valve. Whatever the most restrictive point of that system is, that's gonna be your limiting factor ultimately. Other companies, the jets may look cool, they may act cool, <laughs> they may do functions like RDM and stuff like that, but guess what? The thing is, the most restrictive part is that valve that you don't see, it's inside that jet. And ultimately that's restricting the flow on everything in that system. So you're gonna get less of an output, not as an abundance of an output, and ultimately not gonna work as well. So just wanna explain on this video, thank you for watching. This was kind of a higher level intricacy. If I lost you, please visit some of our other videos and look online here because we do a good job. I was gonna say a well job. We do a good job of explaining all of this stuff in detail so you can understand this better and make an informed decision on not only what company you wanna go with, but more importantly, how to set up your CO2 products. I'm Chris, this is CryoFX. Thanks for watching.